Hobber here, and today we're going to show you some super adobe earth homes being built right out here in the California desert. This is Jump from the Mojave Center, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this place and what's being built here and how it's constructed. Super adobe earth bag homes are essentially built by taking uh, a continuous polypropylene uh, sandbag, one continuous bag, uh, cutting it into links to make each one of these rows. And then you fill the bags with earth, which is made of sand, silt, and clay. Um, depending on what your soil is, you might need to add some sort of bonder to it. Uh, but the amazing thing about these earth domes is they take very little uh, material to build. It's something that all of us have that's right underneath our feet all the time, which is the precious earth. Um, so you have the bags, the earth, and in between each one of these bags is a layer of uh, barbed wire that helps hold the thing together. It gives you that tensile strength that um, holds each one of the layer uh, to itself. So what's inside these bags exactly? So on our property, we have uh, a very unique type of soil. Um, like, so, like I said, soil is made up of sand, silt, and clay. We have a very, very strong um, silt content. Uh, we barely have any clay, which is the natural bonder, which is in our soil. So because we don't have any clay, we add a cement uh, to each one of our mix. It's somewhere between 10 to 15% which has the, uh, it acts as that bonder because we don't have the clay. And because we have that, you get these rock solid bricks that are made of just the earth and somewhere between 10 to 15% mix of cement, some water, put it into your bag, tamp it down nice and hard, and then you get these rock hard walls. And this makes for great insulation as well, right? Yeah, so, uh, the, one of the amazing things about not only natural building, but earth bags in particular, is these bags are about 16 inches thick. And so you've got this amazing earthen mass that will uh, stop the uh, sun from just penetrating and beating your house. Uh, conventional buildings are straight up and down, and the roof is straight over. So you get hit with that sun, and it just soaks it up. The domes have this really nice shape uh, that sort of refracts the sun over, up and over it. And also you've got 16 inches of beautiful natural uh, insulation that has uh, straight out of the ground and keeps your temperatures in your dome very nice and uh, cool during the day and then at night. Uh, we'll release some of that heat from the penetrating sun all day uh, and it'll warm your structure passively at nighttime. And this is an incredibly earth-friendly way of building, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, for us, we have a soil that is um, not ideal. Uh, ideally, we'd have more clay and you wouldn't have to add any cement to it. So we do have some cement. There is the polypropylene bag as well. But um, it, here we're showing what is possible with our soil. If you went to your place, you could possibly find, and it's very likely, that you have a good deal of clay and you wouldn't have to add any cement whatsoever. Um, but all of the products uh, besides the bag and the cement that comes to us uh, just comes right from the property that we're on right here. So we don't have to source these things from far distance. Uh, it's a affordable product, which is the earth. Um, and uh, that's what our property calls for. Yours might be different, and hopefully is. So this was the first house constructed on the property, and Jump is gonna give us a little tour. Let's go on in. Come on in. This place is pretty spacious, and uh, now we're looking up 
the very top, you can see the sky there. And there are some beams, wood beams right there. And some more wood there. And there, over the doorways. And you've got windows. What will be windows. Right. And this is the doorway we came through. So tell us a little bit about this place, Jump. So uh, when we got here in uh, January of 2021, our past knowledge of earthen building was based in adobe bricks, um, which is you're using the earth and you use straw or maybe even corn husks, or not corn husks, rice husks to be that binder. But here in the desert, we don't have any of those things. So we started uh, looking at what other kind of earth building there is. And we found super adobe and uh, these bags act to hold all those things together. So that's what made sense to our property and what we have here. Um, our uh, mission for the Mojave Center is to bring people to the center to learn that building a home is something that every single one of us should have the ability to do and have access to. It's not something that's only made for the ultra rich and that you have to hire somebody and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can learn these skills uh, over a seven day workshop with us and take them back to your property. Um, so we believe that the structures and having a home is something that every human should have access to for their own survival. Um, we also want to bring people here to just see what is possible. My, I always grew up thinking, you know, we had to live in a square box. You had to hire somebody out to build your house for you. I'm uh, 34 years old. I started learning Super Adobe over a year ago, and today I've built with uh, probably 300 other people, uh, now seven different structures. So this is something that everyone could learn and take away and do at your own property or with friends on somebody else's property. We all should have our homes. Right. Housing should be a right, not a privilege, correct? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have a house and you don't have that base for your survival, how else are you going to be able to, um, you know, move past just trying to figure out how am I going to survive? If you don't have a home, then you're fighting the elements and you're not actually able to thrive. You're always in that like survival mode of trying to figure out every little bit. Figure out your home and you've got your survival and then you can move into a thriving state of what are all the other things that I need in my life. Now I noticed this thing over here. You were telling me about this earlier. What Explain what this is right here. So this is a, a wind scoop. Um, if you see on the outside um, of the structure, it's kind of a natural swamp cooler. You've got what sort of looks like a chimney facing in the direction of the prevailing winds here. And uh, it's always bringing in fresh air into your structure. One of the things that we have in our homes is we don't have fresh air all the time coming into our homes. Very often it's coming through an AC, which is running through some kind of um, piping, which might have a lot of dust and buildup, could even have some mold and things like that. But this is fresh air that's circulating throughout your uh, property or your structure at all times. Um, when this is finished too, we'll have um, a piece on it that you can open and close say you don't want any wind coming in at that moment um, but so you can close it and this will passively cool your house and bring in fresh air whenever you need it sounds like a great idea and yeah. it I felt it myself you can feel feel air flowing through there so tell us a little about the skylights yeah so this is our apprentice dome, we had some, uh, we have each season apprentices that come who want to sort of extend their learning of these earth domes. Uh, they just got done with designing and building this and part of 
uh, their design process was how are we going to bring natural light into it. And one of the ways with these earth domes is leaving the top open and having uh, a beautiful skylight that brings in uh, nice natural light. You also have these forms that you see right here. Um, these will be pulled out and these will be um, windows as well that will bring in some nice natural light. Rock Hopper, your viewers might be interested in how well these uh, structures do in super harsh environments. Um, one of the amazing things about earth domes, well there's a couple things. One of them is uh, as you can see, each one of these rows, like we said, has barbed wire in between them. And uh, it allows for play and movement. Unlike a conventional post and beam, um, if you start bending a post and beam, that wood is just going to snap. It's not meant to move at all. These are meant to have a little bit of play. And there's been several different uh, examples of where uh, earthquakes have happened, and these are the only structures that are left standing. There's one famous one in Nepal a couple years ago when they had that big earthquake. Every structure in the entire town was demolished, uh, and a project that had gone there to build earth domes was the only thing that was left, and it was the center for um, everyone, co the community coming together and trying to survive now in an environment that had been demolished. Another thing here in California, we have wildfires and they're only getting worse. Uh, these structures are uh, essentially fireproof. It's just earth. You can't burn earth. Uh, actually, if a fire came through here and uh, engulfed one of these structures, they would actually become stronger because right now it's a clay pot that's just waiting to be put into a kiln and fire would actually make the structure stronger. If you had a hurricane, um, the high winds that could come and knock down specific buildings and damage, uh, maybe throw something at a building and hit it and, and knock it over, one of the beautiful things about it arch or a dome is uh, they don't have singular points where if you destroyed that the whole thing falls apart. The way that an arch or a dome works is it distributes its weight across the entire structure. So if one little piece got damaged or something happened to it or hit, all it would do is take that and send it around to the other side and up and over. So they're um, beautiful for survival uh, and any environment that is extremely harsh. All right, we have the mixing process going on right now. So this is uh, our earth mix, like I talked about before. We have a mix that goes uh, five buckets of earth and then one half bucket of the cement, which gets you somewhere between the 10 to 15 percent cement mix. And then out comes uh, what we go, and then we add into our bags. And this is how they begin filling the bags. So the dirt goes into that bag, and then as you can see, it winds around. So uh, it looks very simple, but there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. We have Holly here, who I actually went to high school with. So, uh, <laughs> and we have Nicolette. Um, it's, they're doing some bagging right now. And so they're taking our stabilized earth mix right here, which is a moistened to perfect moisture content, and a little bit of stabilizer. Right now they're putting it into this uh, woven polypropylene bag. It's a continuous roll. And they're just doing it scoop full by scoop full and trying to keep this material nice and packed. So it's loose and um, um, it's just loose material before you tamp it. And then after you tamp it, as it starts to dry, it becomes these really hard um, stabilized bricks. And the cool thing about earth back building is 85% of it to 90% of it is just all earth. And then if you want to take a look at our compass system, I can show you how we take measurements. All right, let's check that out.
So you might be asking, like, how do we get a perfect circle? And it's actually really hard to get a perfect circle. But there are some really easy tricks or tips that you can do to make sure that uh, the geometry of the dome is um, perfect. So uh, in the middle here, we have this center compass. It almost looks like a racquetball. You mean so tether ball? Tether ball. <laughs> OK. OK. All right, so uh, in the middle here, we have our whole uh, measuring system to make uh, an earthen dome. It starts in a cylinder shape. And as we go up, we start to curve in. And there's two main um, measurement devices that we use to get this perfect shape. So the first one here is a center compass pole. And then the middle here, this uh, measures our radius of our circle. And so with this given dome, we're making an eight foot diameter. So this height compass is fixed, meaning that it's um, a given length. And um, without getting too technical with it, it's actually quite easy. Uh, you put this height compass on the exterior part of your bag, the exterior part of your diameter, and then uh, it just measures to the inside of this bag right here. Um, as we go up, you can see that this will start to like arc in as we're going up, and um, that'll determine how this how this dome ends up like curving towards the top. Uh, we calibrate this one. So remember this one's always constant and this one is changes. As we go up, you can tell that this uh, the arc goes up and the circles actually start to get smaller. So the radius has to change. And so at this given height, um, the radius will be here, which is a lot smaller than what it is down here. Um, so these are the two main devices that we use. Um, when making an earthen dome, you have your center compass and your height compass. The polypropylene bags will deteriorate due to the UV rays, so the final step is to get the plaster over the structure. So I'll be parking in here for the evening here at the Mojave Center, and we have pizza. More coming. <laughs> All right, more pizza. Woohoo! <laughs> Everybody enjoy that pizza? Yeah. <laughs> Special thanks to Darian here who made these pizzas. Out in the Wild West, we use barbed wires. Barbed wire for our marshmallow holders. Where do you want it? I hope you enjoyed learning about Super Adobe Earth Homes out here in the California desert. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up like on my videos and share with all your family and friends. I'm here at the Mojave Center. Until next time, this is Rock Haber, and I'll see ya.